Good morning, Manchester, and to those of you in surrounding towns, welcome to hour one of, uh, hour two of Trot at Large. I am your forgot where I was host, Rich Gerard. Thanks for tuning in. You can find us on the web at GerardAtLarge.com, and you can find us on Facebook and Twitter also at Gerard at Large, where we encourage you to like us and to follow us because we get the big uh, interviews. And this morning, we're pleased to have in studio former State Senator Jim Rubens and Hal Shirtliff, who is with the New England uh, the New England chapter of the... Well, I'm the New England coordinator. The New England it. coordinator for the John Birch Society. There is this thing out there which maybe you've heard about, maybe you haven't. And by the way, before I get started, I want to thank our good friend Bill Wynn of GoffstownToday.com for coming in studio with his ever-famous cameras to uh, record this for posterity. This will go up on our website, our YouTube, and uh, maybe even our Vimeo channel uh, so that we can get the broadest possible exposure. There's something out there referred to as an Article 5. What's an Article 5? Well, we're going to learn about that, but there is a move afoot by conservatives and liberals alike across the country to convene a constitutional convention called by this, uh, you know, these United States. If that happens, we could see a rewrite of our Constitution. No. Jim Rubin says no. And with that, I guess what we're going to do here is, is have both gentlemen introduce themselves personally and professionally, and then we're going to understand what an Article 5 is, and uh, listen to the, each, each of them explain why it's a good or bad idea. So Jim, we might as well start with you. Yeah, we'll start with, start with the underlying problem. Uh, this morning there's a hearing on rescinding a, an application by the state of New Hampshire passed by our legislature by huge margins in 2012 applying for a balanced budget amendment uh, constitutional convention right. at which a balanced budget amendment would be drafted by delegates selected by state legislatures uh, and uh, that proposed uh, amendment, should the delegates be able to agree, would be sent back to the states, uh, 38 of which would be required to adopt or ratify that amendment. There have been 27 amendments to the U.S. Constitution. All of them have come from Congress. Um, there are two means in the Constitution uh, by which a uh, constitutional amendment can be brought to the states, the 38 states in this case, to ratify. One is through Congress. Congress at any time can propose an amendment. Uh, or uh, states, if 34 states, two-thirds of the states, apply uh, using language applying for uh, an amending convention limited to a specific subject, uh, those states are uh, brought together in a convention and they work on uh, the delegates, again, should they agree, uh, to bring so, language so back to saying, the states. So, so there are two means to amend the Constitution. The second one, which is parallel to the congressional means, has never been used in history. So you're saying that an Article yeah. 5 is not a, a, a broad opportunity to rewrite the Constitution. The Constitution you're saying it has to be called for specific reasons. If you read Article 5, you see there's no authority in the Constitution for, for a, a convention to rewrite the Constitution. Uh, the, the, the history of, of these conventions at the state level, there have been over 200 state level constitutional conventions. They've all remained limited to the subject uh, called for in the state constitutional conventions. There have been 34 uh, federal or multi-state conventions uh, dealing, with, uh, dealing with agreements uh, between the states and all 34 of those have remained, including the initial constitutional convention, the only one we've ever had and ever will have, uh, have all remained uh, bound by the subject matter limitation of the call. So that, that's very important to know. There's never been a runaway convention at the state level or the federal level. Uh, I, uh, and then just one more thing. This morning, the, the question at hand is on the balanced budget amendment. Uh, since the 1970s, there's been a movement uh, by the states to apply for a balanced budget amendment to the U.S. Constitution. There is no constitutional restriction on Congress simply printing or borrowing money. We are at a crisis mode now in the United States of America. Uh, if interest rates, and they will within a few years, return to normal when the Federal Reserve Board stops suppressing interest rates, we'll be spending one out of every five dollars at the federal government level, and this could happen as early as five years from now, on debt service. And the problem with this debt service is it's being spent on current expenditures. It's not being spent on bridges, education, scientific research, and so we're loading our kids and grandkids with debt that they cannot pay, and thus the states, and here's the concluding wrap, 
Congress refuses to bring a constitutional balanced budget amendment back to the states for potential ratification. The states are taking this Article V convention process into their hands and, uh, and, and working toward a convention. We have 24 states in hand. We need 10 more states to achieve the 34 necessary to have a constitutional balanced budget amending convention at which, as I mentioned, I'll, I'll stop there. I'm, I'm going to have a clock convention here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. I, know that, I know there's a lot to say, but yeah. I need to make sure everyone has a chance. So, yeah. Hal, if I, if, if I can distill what um, Senator Rubens is saying here, um, this isn't a, a broad opportunity to tinker with the Constitution. If I understand what he's saying, there are 24 states who have called for a balanced budget amendment, um, and New Hampshire is looking to be... Uh, New well, Hampshire, Hampshire has one has already. One. Uh, is, Article five. So if, if it is yep. this limited in scope thing that the senator says it is, why would the John Birch Society... Well, that's a, wonderful, that's a good question. Well, first off, Article 5 does not limit a convention. You as you read the Article 5, it says that there's only two things that it restricts an Article 5 convention. One of them has already come to pass. Uh, dealt with the importation and taxation of, sla importation of slaves. Uh, thankfully, that was done away with in 1808. The other one is uh, equal suffrage for the senators uh, in, in the states. Everything else is on the table. And the, you'll see the word plural, amendments, not amendments. So there's nothing in Article 5 that says a state or states will call uh, a Article 5 for a specific purpose. They may do that, but once they convene, everything's off. Once they convene, they can do pretty much anything they want. And, and this issue is interesting because you have left and right working in favor of it, and you have left and right working against it. Uh, numerous uh, Supreme Court justices have said um, an Article 5 cannot be controlled. Judge Bork, the late Judge Bork, uh, said that even if Congress makes laws in the state, the various state uh, laws that may be passed, they can ignore them. They'll be unenforceable. So uh, we, the idea of a balanced budget is very appealing. I mean, I've been involved in this issue since 1988 when I first I said, why would you be against a balanced budget amendment? But you've got to read the whole amendment. Well, I'm, I'm about to do that. Um, I mean, these proposed balanced budget amendments. Uh, well, they're not drafted yet. There is no amendment well, on right, the table. But that would not happen until delegates are convened well, the the and work over the work the, over the, the, right, the, first, the, first, the first thing yeah. I want to do yeah. is read Article 5. It's a fairly short article. I'm yeah. going to read it for the audience. We'll post it up on our website. We'll post idea. it with this archive. Yeah. Article 5 says, The Congress, whenever two-thirds of both houses shall deem it necessary, shall propose amendments to this Constitution or to the application uh, or on the application of legislatures of two-thirds of the several states shall call a convention for proposing amendments which in either case shall be valid to all intents and purposes as part of this Constitution when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states or by conventions in three-fourths thereof as the, one, uh, as the one or the other mode of ratification may be proposed by, uh, by the Congress, provided that no amendment which may be made prior to the year 1,808 shall in any manner affect the first and fourth clauses in the ninth section of the first article, and that no state without its consent shall be deprived of its equal suffrage in the Senate. So I want to read the first part again because I, I want to make this clear, and maybe you two gents can use it to seize on the points you're trying to make, but Congress whenever two-thirds of both houses shall deem it necessary, shall propose amendments to this Constitution or on the application of the legislatures of two-thirds of the several states shall call a convention for, the, uh, for proposing amendments which in either case shall be valid to all intents and purposes as part of this Constitution when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states. The, well, the key thing, the, the key words, proposing amendments, right in the Constitution, not to rewrite the Constitution. The Birchers have been uh, a actually going back. There's to been a lot of other organizations, including the uh, the, the, for NRA, the, the NRA, the NRA, the Center for the American Policy Legion, Priorities yeah, on the left. One at a time. One at a time. Yeah. So okay, yeah. but what, here's what I need to have clear in my head: is it th is it your opinion, Jim, that uh, two thirds of the states have to call for, say, a balanced budget amendment, and that's the reason why they're calling for a convention, or can 34 states call for a convention for any range of amendments to the Constitution? See, my reading of this, to be honest with you, says that the states 
can call a convention for the purpose of proposing amendments to the Constitution. It doesn't sound to me like it's limited in this case as you're bringing up the balanced budget amendment uh, that New Hampshire has got uh, uh, pending. Yeah, there, there are a couple of ways to answer this. The first is the way I answered this in my introduction. There have been hundreds of, uh, at the state level, and there have been 34 amendments, uh, 34 conventions at the, at the federal level. In no case has the convention ever strayed from the limited, limited subject matter applications of the states. But that doesn't mean, the it, state. doesn't mean it It's can't. never happened. I, can I? No, no let me finish. Let me finish. There, there, are seven, or, there, are over, there are over 700 existing in Congress's inbox states asking for conventions on specific subjects. Four of those 700 applications that are sitting in Congress's inbox are for open conventions without subject matter limitations. Okay. All the rest of the applications now, Congress no, 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 has no, no, these. No, this is important. No, no, well, yeah. I know it's important, okay. but so is my clock. And yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a point okay. there that I want to give yeah. Hal an opportunity to respond yeah. to because okay. I think it's a, a flashpoint here in this debate. So. Okay, well, I'm going to get back to the balanced budget. Without a constitutional budget, you're not going to be able to rein in the spending. You can have a balanced budget, and technically, when you borrow money, the balance, the, the, the budget's balanced, right? It's a little smoke and mirrors, but they borrow money, they simply print more money up because they have something called the Fed, which, as far as I know, none of the Convention of States or these other advocates are addressing in any of their proposals. Uh, you may have an increase in taxes. You may have a VAT tax as a result of your balanced budget amendment. So unless you, inc unless you lower the size of government at the federal level, this, this, this will have no bearing whatsoever. So, so these are all excited. Yeah. Yeah. They'll get all excited. We're going to save the planet. We're going to save the country with one amendment. Because keep in mind, we talk about Congress as being somehow alien to the rest of the country. You send in New Hampshire four delegates, and every two years, two of those are up for, up for grabs. You're not doing your job, the voters of New Hampshire, if they're sending people to Congress who aren't doing the wishes of obeying the Constitution. My entire adult life, I've been hearing politicians on the Democratic side and the Republican side telling me they're going to go to Washington and become fiscally responsible. They get down there, they break the promise. They will not give us a balanced budget amendment for the states to vote on, they will not balance the budget. The, the job of crafting the language of the amendment is left in this process to the delegates, to the convention to work out should there be limits on borrowing. Should there be limits on, on, on money printing? All of these issues are to be worked out by the delegates to bring language back to the states for potential ratification. So the, so the matters you're talking about, Al, are left to the delegates. Again, That's right. I'm Everything coming, is left to the delegates. Right. right. So I'm coming on to stick to the subject now. I, so I go well, back if there. everything's left to the delegates, that right. means that any, any, any amendment that is developed by the delegates... Related to fiscal in, integrity and balanced budget. So, I, so are, there again, th have, are there 24 gonna, states I'm, that have called for a balanced budget amendment? There were 33 in the late 1970s. 70s until the John Birchers got involved in this. And, and other organizations, and like other Eagle left, Forum, and like the left, NRA, like the Daughters of the American Revolution. Uh, it's I, not just you're, the John you're, Birchers. You're, you're well, leaving, I, I, you're I, leaving I, it I, on the left wing. Yeah, the AFL-CIO yeah. yeah. was the major hey, progenitor. And don't funder. get on left wing. You're taking, you, you're AFL -CIO taking support, the, support from Larry Lessig and May Day Pack. So don't go about left wing. Uh, you right, know, right, you guys are working dovetailing together. And you guys over in Montana earlier this week. Bring their mics down. Bring their mics down. We're going to break. the other protection. It is 20 five minutes after the hour here on the Dread at Large radio show. We continue now with what's been a spirited and lively discussion over whether or not there should be a convention of the states to amend the Constitution of these United States. Joining us in studio is Jim Rubens. He's a former state senator, candidate for governor, and candidate most recently for the United States Senate. And Hal uh, Shirtliff, who is with the John Birch Society. He's the New England coordinator, and he is the, uh, uh, would it be fair to say that you're the organizer of, is it uh, organizer of Camp Constitution? Oh, founder and uh, direct, co-founder and director. Co-founder yeah. and director of Camp Constitution, and um, I, I know my kids spent some uh, time there at the camp, and boy, did they learn a lot about the Constitution. So uh, this is a, a fascinating discussion. At hand here is a bill here in the state of New Hampshire that would repeal New Hampshire's request for a constitutional amendment uh, to balance the budget. And Rubens thinks this is a bad idea because he actually wants a so-called Article 5 uh, convention, and uh, Shirtliff thinks it's a good idea because he thinks an Article 5 convention won't be limited to specific purposes, but will lead to a, an opportunity to fundamentally rewrite the Constitution of these United States. And we're discussing the points here. If you'd like to chime in, have a question or a call, 606-6762 is our number. It's 606-6762. All right. Where'd we leave? Well, let me, let me address this rewrite issue. Um, let me just ask uh, Jim. 
Do you think the Constitution is the problem? We lack in the Constitution two things that I'd like to see there. One is a balanced budget amendment. The other are term limits for members of Congress. Those those features that are now necessary. And the reason that the framers, but the, the people uh, who wrote our Constitution... Is, so saying, yes, the Constitution is deficient. We've amended it 27... We, we've done things like give women and, and blacks right. uh, equal, equal citizenship. But I'm saying, we did that through con amending the Constitution. Is the Constitution a problem? Is it the reason why we're in this mess? We need a balanced budget amendment to the United States Constitution. Congress can't balance the budget. Democrats and Republicans for, for my entire adult lifetime have been going, going, making promises during elections and they failed to balance the budget. And they're, they're threatening our, our, our nation. Uh, our nation Admiral, uh, Admiral, uh, Admiral uh, Mullen, the former leader of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, so, uh, is, 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 has on stated, stated on record that, that the uh, number one security. threat to national security is this crazy money printing and, and, and Congress is unable to do this work right. on its own. And, and the, the framer, this is very important, the framers of our Constitution unanimously adopted this two mechanic, this two means by which to amend the Constitution, and they did that. They did that thinking, one through Congress, they did that thinking that Congress could one day become corrupt and unaccountable. That day has arrived. Congress is not right. accountable for the well-being of national security of the public. And, 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 and so, Hal, you're saying we should ignore and uh, a part I'm of the Constitution. Ignore, I'm not what saying other ignore, parts uh, of the Constitution well, should we ignore? Off, it's not, we're not okay. ignoring the Constitution. See, this is another US, COS talking point. It's the founders. Talk, uh, the founders. Uh, 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 this is Jim, Jim, we're gonna let Hal talk now. Go the founders ahead. did yeah. want. They, they, made, they, they made the process very complicated to pass amendments. Let's thank God they did, because we would have a thousand amendments. We would have lost whatever limited government we ever had. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. So, so they the wanted us to debate the issue, which is what they're here doing now. We'll be doing it later on today. It isn't that because Mark Levin writes a book and because he's a crank and he threatens people and blesses people on the radio that we have to have one. It should be discussed, and there should be the pros and cons. There's always pros and cons to everything. And these folks think, oh, you're just going to go in there, we're going to come up with this wonderful amendment, it's, and it's going to pass, and everything's going to be great. It's going to solve all of the problems of our nation. So, but there seems to be a fundamental difference here on two points that I can... Jim, you're, you're saying that the Constitution is deficient, needs a balanced budget amendment, needs to have term limits. Hal, you're saying that, um, <clears throat> if, I, if I can summarize what I think you're saying is, why amend the Constitution when they're already not following they're it? They're already not following it, um, large portions of it. When it comes to income tax, they have no trouble with that one. They're that one they like. Uh, and, and then, but I, I think the subsidiary issue is, Jim, you seem to think that a convention of the states can, is limited to the topic of the convention. So in other words, if 30... I don't, I don't, that was, yeah, I don't think that. That's, no, no, that's well. historically... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me let me talk it through here because yeah, yeah, remember yeah. behind these microphones, I'm trying to drag an audience along to, to to clarify things. So you 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 are of the opinion, okay, that a if 34 states want uh, something having to do with the budget, then the Congress will convene a convention of the states, and you're saying that they are limited only to discussing topics about the budget. How uh, okay. Hal's position is that if a convention is convened then they're not limited to the topic matter on which they were convened, but can engage in whatever amendment making they want to make. Do I have your arguments essentially? Yes, pretty much so, yes. All right, so now what I would like to ask Hal to do first is explain why he believes that a convention of the states called for a specific purpose can open up Pandora's box. Well, first off, Article 5 doesn't say you limit it to convention. And then you have delegates. Right now, we're not sure how they'd be chosen. There's no laws guiding uh, or rules or regulations. But once that entity sits, they're a sovereign body. Now, where, the, why do you say they're a sovereign body? Cause because I, I, read the, I read the article. I don't, I don't understand where it says it's a sovereign body. Well, they're deputies for, of the people, okay. and they're at this convention, right? And they're supposed to propose amendments, any amendment whatsoever. Up for grabs. Reading, Anything. Re reading the plain language. Well, Jim, I'm going to give you a chance to come in now. But reading the plain language, it doesn't say um, that the a call of the states will be limited to any particular amendment that may have led to the petition. It just says the states can petition for a convention where amendments can be proposed. The, the drafters, back in 1787, 1786 period, when this language was was hatched. Uh, had the practice of, of amending conventions throughout the entire, and there were 34 of them up through the Constitutional Convention itself. In every single case, 
these conventions adhered to the subject matter limit limitation uh, of the application of the states in every case. So historical precedent, during the time this was debated and drafted, the framers found it unnecessary to flesh out the process. The states select the delegates, and the delegates are, are responsible to the state legislatures that select these delegates. That process will continue. We've had a, a, a very large amount of legal analysis of this over the past 20 years. This is after the time when the Birchers got involved in, in, in opposing this. And it's very, very clear, uh, not only through historical precedent and, and, and what was in the minds of the drafters at the time this was being drafted, limited to subject matter. No, and, now, and as much as I'm an, you yeah. know, I'm an original 10 kind of guy, right. I, I'm sympathetic to the argument. But let, and, me, let, me, let me ask you And conventions have never strayed throughout entire right. state level well, and federal level conventions okay. have never once strayed I like from subject matter but, but, until, but, but until FDR, okay. yeah. until FDR, no right. president saw fit to seek more than two terms because the historic precedent set by George Washington was two terms. So yeah. my question to you is, is we that historic... We the Constitution to deal with that. We put in right. term limits for the president. I, I, I understand yeah. that, yeah. but did yeah. the... Uh, my question is... is you notice that people have not question, ignored that. My question is yeah. whether or not historic precedent is legally binding. Just because it happened that way 200 years ago doesn't mean it's going to happen that way this time. And so, do you admit or do you acknowledge, if there, if in your mind there is one, that there is a possibility that Hal Shirtliff's concerns about a convention being open to any possibility um, exists? Even these folks acknowledge it. No, no I don't. My, not at all. Maybe you don't. Not at all. But Mike Ferris, Mike Ferris, my question, Mike Ferris it's, it's possible. It's Larry Lessig it's, says it's, it's a teeny tiny possibility. That was his legal opinion in an email he sent out last year. All right. But so, but there, is, there are two responses. Is historic to this. precedent binding? There are two. There are two answers to this. Number one, all of the people, all of the organizations working on an Article Five amending convention of the states now, no one working on this wants anything other than a limited subject matter convention. No one working at it. Of the, of the 700 extant, some of which have been rescinded, as Hal points out, uh, uh, requests for conventions of the states of 700, only four of them don't have subject matter limitation. Congress has never called uh, a convention because in no case it, throughout history has the number the of applications by subject matter ever risen to the to the, to the two thirds of the right. states. Yet. Well, okay, now so there's a second. There's a second. If you don't right, buy any of this, okay. If you don't buy any of this, any constitutional amendment that might be proposed. Remember, the, the delegates can't apply a constitutional amendment. They can only propose back to the several states, three quarters of which are required to, to ratify that. This is, this is our fundamental protection against a rewrite, a crazy rewrite of the Constitution. Can you imagine, it only takes 13 states, 13 of 99 legislative bodies among the states are all that are required to veto and kill any proposed amendment. If a proposed amendment coming from delegates at this, at this, at this amending convention is whacked out, crazy, uh, attempts to subvert or repeal the, uh, as, the as the Birchers say, repeal the first, the Bill of Rights, match. this stuff will never get through the 13 states. You're not going to, you're not going to have a good, uh, I, I, Second. No, 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 no. So, no, no, no. so the fundamental. No, you stop because <laughs> right. I'm almost out of time, and I get, I get, I get to try. All right. To get, well, I get, first off, they, they talk right, about. So these, what I need oh. to ask you first on the other side of this is, if uh, a constitutional convention is called, say, on the question of a balanced budget, mm -hmm. what what precedent is there for? Um, a, a can of worms to be opened. The very first convention under the Articles of Confederation, okay, um, they were given strict authority, limited authority to revise the articles under Article 13 of the Article of Confederation, right, that said that they needed majority, all the states had to sign on to any changes. They changed the rules, okay. I'm glad they did because they had the authority to do that. They had the sovereign authority. That was, that's the precedent that we were working on today, okay. Uh, unfortunately, George Washington, James Madison, Benjamin Franklin, folks like that will not be at this any at any current any future. Uh, we don't know who the delegates will be. See, these con convention of states think people think they're all going to come from Mike Ferris's uh, Patrick Henry College. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but <laughs> we may, we have no idea. Now, in September 2011, there was a conference at Harvard, and they used the word con con, con by the way. Uh, it was uh, there are two groups of people. There were people on the left and the right. Out of that came the Convention of States founded by Mark Meckler. Mark Meckler co-hosted this event along with a man named Professor Larry Lessig. They are part of a coalition. 
So he's saying that there's lefties on our side, there's left wing on, on their side, and they're, they're fueling it. Uh, I actually I could show you screenshots of callaconvention.org that says they're part of a coalition. ALEC, American Legislative Exchange Council, was a really a, a lobbyist group, a yeah. uh, corporate entity. Uh, George Soros backs a group called Wolfpack, chaired by Cenk Uerger. Why would I these conservative folks... I learned folks last night, just a point of clarification, well, uh, I learned last night from somebody who works for, for yeah. Wolfpack, they've gotten zero dollars from George Soros. So, so well, if you, you guys, ch if you look check, at, look at, if you go check to do a little research, you'll find they got a lot of money from Bob. Okay, right. So, from, gents, you know what, we're, we're up on the clock. I'm going to give each of you 30 seconds to wrap up your case. And I mean, boys, 30 seconds. We're going to start with Jim. If he goes to 31, take his mic down. All right. Yeah, just because we're out of time. Fund, <laughs> yeah, fundamental protection against a, a, the runaway convention, the conspiracy theories of the virtues are that... What Even, about your conspiracy uh, theories? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> what, if you look at the 27 amendments that have passed the, the, the three-quarters of the states that we have, all of them have been supported by overwhelming supermajorities of the American public on the right and left because they're fundamentally sensible. It's why something like, like a term limit... tax? Huh? Uh, anyway. It, at the time, it was perceived to be, yeah. uh, we, we have reversed uh, prohibition, okay? It, 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 the, the, the American public changed their mind. So anything coming out of uh, an amending convention will have to survive the, the veto authority of 13 of 99 state legislative bodies. This is a process under the control of legislatures, and if it doesn't make sense, if the language is not clear, and it's not supported by overwhelming supermajorities of the American public, it's going to fail. Right. And the delegates to the convention will know this, and they... Jim, oh, stop. done. Okay, Pay he left foul. out that Congress can uh, have state ratifying conventions. That's one of the facts. That's what he left out in this. So the state legislators may never get a chance to vote on anything. The solution isn't a bunch of new amendments uh, to the Constitution. The solution is for the American people to, to understand their Constitution and get actively involved in the process of making sure it's sound constitutions get elected at every level. That's the way we're going to save this country, not through a bunch of amendments uh, at a con uh, coming out of a convention. All right, we have to leave it there, gents. We've run a bit over time. Thank you for an ins a spirited, engaging debate. I hope you don't mind my attempts to corral it and keep it on track. Uh, both of you did a... That's what a referee's are for, right? There you go. And, and believe me, I've, I've worn the patch and run the fields. I was a state-certified varsity referee once upon uh -huh. a time, so uh, this is a lot like a Pinkerton-Londonary game <laughs> or any of the Manchester rivalries. But, uh, gents, thanks for joining us. Uh, keep us up to date. I'm sure we haven't heard the last of this, and we will keep it uh, on our airwaves here at Trout Large. And we want to